Hey, this is Heather from the Renaissance English History Podcast, and this is your Tudor Minute for September the 30th. Today in 1553, Mary I proceeded through London on the way to her coronation. Two women held a very prominent place, her half-sister Elizabeth and Anne of Cleves. Of course, Elizabeth was family, and the two had been very close when Elizabeth was younger. But in recent years, the taint of Protestantism had landed on Elizabeth, and there was some suspicion about Elizabeth's loyalty. Anne was there because she was someone who had suffered the same public humiliation as Mary's mother being divorced, and now Mary had the opportunity to make amends and give a display of the unity between her and her former stepmother. Mary was driven through London on a carriage drawn by six horses. She wore a purple gown with ermine edges, and a small circlet of gold was on her head, and observers said that it had so many valuable jewels in it that its value was inestimable. She had to hold her head up with her hands as the weight of the circlet was so great. Her carriage was accompanied by knights, bishops, lords, and immediately in front of her carriage was the Privy Council, as well as senior nobles were in front of the carriage as well, the Lord Chancellor, the Earl of Oxford, and the Knights of the Bath. Immediately behind her was Princess Elizabeth, and then Anne of Cleves behind that, and then a number of gentlewomen. All along the route of the coronation procession, pageants were performed, including ones by performers from Genoa and Florence. A writer described a conduit at Cornhill as running with wine. And in the city, the carriage with Mary stopped, and the Recorder of London read out a speech to her professing the loyalty of the people of London, and he gave Mary a gold thread purse with a thousand gold coins. That would also be heavy, I would imagine. And then near to St. Paul's, an oration was read out to her in English and Latin. And from here, Mary's procession continued on to Whitehall, where she would be crowned the following day. That's your Tudor Minute. Remember, you can dive deeper into life in 16th century England through the Renaissance English History Podcast at englandcast.com, where I have several episodes on Mary Tudor.